Welcome back to the watch list. Time to take a closer look at AI, the semiconductor market, the ARM IPO that is coming our way. It is huge. Angelo Zeno, senior equity analyst at CFRA, and Daniel Rubino, executive editor at Windows Central. Thank you so much both for being here. Um, Angelo, I'll start with you. As we see the ARM IPO coming our way, we know that they actually had reached out to NVIDIA at one point to see if they could sell it off there, but now it's turning into a $52 billion IPO. It really says something about tech and the demand for tech IPOs, doesn't it? What does it say to you? Yeah, I mean, I mean, let's see what the actual, uh, you know, how this thing launches and uh, the actual demand once it, once the IPO kind of goes out there, and whether or not, you know, we actually have that, you know, that that intrigue from investors out there at that valuation. But um, you know, I, I think it's one of those situations where you know maybe we have a more favorable market. We definitely have a more favorable market than we did, you know, 12, 18 months ago in terms of. Um, you know, where we sit on the IPO side of things. But yeah, I mean, this will be our first kind of major test um, in terms of broader tech. Uh, and our view is, um, you know, it, it's it's an interesting story out there. It's not something that necessarily intrigues us that much relative to other opportunities within the semiconductor market and the broader technology space, given the valuation that's out there. Um, but that said, um, you know, I think it's definitely a good sign for um, the broader market as well as for the tech space. Right, understood. Daniel, what do you think? I mean, do you think that ARM's IPO um, will bring a lot of optimism or you're waiting to see the demand for this one? I mean, in theory, there should be demand for this stuff, right? So ARM is, you know, for those who don't know, they design chips, but they don't actually make them or they rather they do the architecture. Instead, they license all this <clears throat> to companies like Qualcomm, Apple, Samsung. They're used almost everywhere. NVIDIA uses them. They're increasingly used in cars and the auto uh, industry. Of course, used in smartwatches. They're used in servers. They're literally everywhere. And ARM is at the center of that. And there's literally no signs of any of this slowing down. Now, in opposition to this, you have like Intel and AMD with the x86 processors. These are a bit larger. They use more power. They're getting better, but ARM is still sort of the king here when it comes to all the cutting edge technology that we're all super excited about, like things like even uh, Apple's Vision Pro, right? That is going to use a, a variation of their uh, processor, which is still based on some ARM designs. Mm. And now we're waiting for C3 AI um, to report after the bell today. Angelo, are you a fan of this one, AI being the ticker? And, you know, what names do you really love in the space at this moment? Yeah, I mean, that's that's not a name that we personally cover on our end or, or you know, on the firm side of things. But, um, you know, as, as far as kind of the, the opportunities in, on the AI side of things, you know, we continue to like kind of a, the core four names that we've been pumping, at least on the semiconductor side of things. And that continues to be, you know, in, in NVIDIA as well uh, as AMD is, is less, you know, less of a stronger story as um, NVIDIA. And we also on the networking side of things continue to like Broadcom as well as Marvell. So, um, you know, those are the names we continue to gravitate to longer term as far as the AI uh, story is, con is concerned on the semiconductor side of things. All right, so NVIDIA, AMD, Broadcom, and Marvell. Um, let, thank you for that. Daniel Rubino, when, you when we take a look at some of the old school names that are trying to come up and keep up um, as we transition into a new world, whether it's for PCs, whether it's for autonomous, um, gaming, uh, PC, you know, like everything that we use, are, are some being left behind? I know you attended the Intel Media Tour just recently. What's next? Where do you see the great companies or the best growth? 2024 is going to be a real critical year for PCs, specifically laptops, some new form factors. And what I mean by that is we're going to see a very big shift in architecture from Intel as well as Qualcomm. Uh, in their types of processors. Qualcomm is going to, they're set to announce Orion, which is their next gen uh, processors. That'll be later October uh, in Hawaii, which will be a nice uh, press event. That chip though is interesting yeah. because Qualcomm currently licenses all their chips, all the Snapdragon stuff from ARM. They bought the company that used to build the chips for Apple, the same engineers. They formed a company called Nuvia. Qualcomm bought 
them. That means Qualcomm right now is building a chip that doesn't rely on ARM. And this long term could be a really interesting downside to ARM if this catches on, because if Orion is good, and I am hearing it is good, it can really damage the business of ARM long term because smartphones and laptops will eventually start using those. Uh, as far as Intel goes, Intel's going to have a big shift in their architecture too for their processors, and this will actually compete with Qualcomm. So I'm really excited to see in 2024 who has the better efficiency, who has the better power management, and all that coming to laptops and uh, all our you know cutting edge devices that we use. All right. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you both so much. Daniel Rubino, Windows Central. Angelo Zeno of CFRA. Thank you, Angelo and Daniel.